don't know if you can see this, but I've got little tiny little clicks on the rear on the uh, uh, passenger side fender well. So I'm trying to get this um, this cable this is as part of the battery cable through here. Get that a little bit closer, get in view of it. I mentioned before. Sorry for the video quality, but I'm you know, talking to a poor man here. I don't have the latest and greatest uh, uh, video capability, but hopefully soon get a decent video cam where I won't have this uh, constant blurriness and so forth. But you can see these two little um, clips there. Here and here. I'm going to try to switch back through there. And then this, at the little battery terminal I made out of solder, believe it or not, that's going to go on the battery post right there. Okay. So, bear with me here. So, in fact, you put my little magnifiers on me. Once you get over the age of 50, I not what they used to be. I'm going to put these on. And, uh, just on my glasses here. I can see what's going on here a little better. It might have been easier if I would have put these on the cable and then kind of pin these down on the fender, but I figure do it this way first. And you can kind of take it from there. So I need something that the current wants to spin around because it's, even though it's possibly going, it still wants to uh, move out of the way. So. Anybody have out there suggestions for a video camera that's not expensive and deep, like <laughs> under 200 bucks? Let me know. Give me a suggestion. So, but it's a little tight these days. It isn't so very expensive, especially this time you're being so cold and heated there, let me tell you, man, and make a big one. Frank, I'd rather get down to where we go after I retired, I was there several years ago. I loved it and missed it terribly. But the central Pennsylvania and you know, it's a little too cold for me in the recent years. I can't stand it. Uh, I got this so cute there. I might make this a little bit shorter. I'm trying to feed this through. And I'm going to do this better. Make a little more off here. I'm not going to, this isn't really going to connect on anything. It's, you know, I'm going to try to grab it underneath and pull it through. But the uh, main thing is I want to get this, or it has a semblance of the cable going somewhere and it's just hanging out with the cleaner there. When you look under a car's um, engine, the battery, there's always a terminal there unless it's a junker and the cleaner is going nowhere. <laughs> All right. And a little bit more up there. And you notice I don't have any fancy equipment. I use a lot of simple tools. So the trick to getting the build halfway decent is patience, patience, patience. Don't try to rush things. Don't try to get too frustrated if you're going to end up not happy with it. And start, you know, 
mess up and up and find in your beer. I'm like, I got that pretty much as far as it go. And very gently, this is the daughter terminal. Have this in the place. And get that to put on that post. body on just for a look. So I can take this whole body off really and just uh you know, but I'm something easy to hold on also keeps me from handling the chassis too much and wearing the uh the paint stuff away. I got cat system behind what's what's up here. Drunk and gut. Huh? I'll take this up a second of you guys and see that. I got two cats. Now, let's get the camera to focus where they are. Yeah, there's a baby boy. And I got a oh, orange one back there. She's a Japanese bobtail. There she goes. Her name is Yuri. The gray one, his name is Captain. And Captain will be 12 years old. Oh. He'll be 12 years old in March, and this little bad one is just four years old. And she runs the house. You better believe it. <laughs> okay. Back to the task at hand here. I heard a little bit of hissing there. He doesn't. She, she wants to play. He doesn't. <laughs> All right, we'll focus back in here. I do believe that's about where I want that. i got to admit, the camera, the way they did this is weird. When I was testing this camera out before I wanted to go on YouTube here, it was showing it in, in real view. But for some reason, as I'm looking at this on my, my laptop screen, it's reversed because I'm seeing letters backwards, things backwards. It's kind of weird. Maybe I can be sitting here. I'm new at this, so you have to bear with me. I'm getting the hang of it here. Okay, we'll come back out of the way here. To give you a glimpse of the chassis, I've got quite a bit of detail here. Got um, 
brake lines, fuel lines, uh, emergency brake cable. Later, I will add um, gas tank gas tank straps. Okay. The chassis is painted with Rust-Oleum um, red oxide primer. Back in the 50s, into the 60s, I think even in the 70s, uh, it was typical for GM to uh, paint your chassis this way. And if you look on the sides and parts of the floor pan, it's very slight overspray of Roman red. The car will eventually be Roman red. That will be the body color, and it will be red interior. And just a little side note, I used to see these cars all the time. I'll, I'll be 53 years old, and in the 60s, the kids, these were everywhere. Not as common as the 55 and 57, 57 Chevys, which was common as gray. But you saw 59 Chevy, 58, 59 uh, Impalas, all types of uh, sedans, hardtops, convertibles. And uh, I always like the looks of this car with the, um, with what they call the bubble roof, which ran from 59 to 62. The 61 to 62 was a little different. Uh, the 59 to 60 still had the still had the wraparound windshield. 61, they bent the post out. It still had a bit of a wraparound, but didn't have a severe dog leg like the um, the 59 to 60 did. And I think they got too many complaints with people knocking their knees. Too much getting cars, especially tall guys like myself. It happened to my dad. He had a he what kind of car that was. He banged his knee up on a dog leg windshield, and <laughs> and he certainly felt that. But um, good looking car. This is back in the days when they didn't hang on to the same ugly body style for um, you know seven eight years, and can't figure out why the car selling so isn't selling up. You know, car styles change. I know GM back in those days had at least two year styling cycle, so. The 59 and 60 were similar, the 61 and 62 were similar, then 63, 64. 65 was a whole different car. They, they did a complete redesign. Is shades got much squarer, much flatter. Uh, of course, fins were long gone. Uh, Wraparound windshields were a thing of the past. Wide whites, they were history. Uh, but like I said, GM had, a, GM had money to burn back in those days. They just didn't hang on to the same. Same boring body style, unlike today. It's starting to get back to that again. Where I know it's the Asian cars, particularly, they're changing every three or four years in complete changes. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of today's cars have the same this like a look like that. It's a little sad. I kind of wish they get a little more daring, not tail fins and so forth per se, but uh, something a little more creative. Change the roof line. Most all the cars have the same roof kink. That little, that little kick up in the rear. Uh, must all the windshield posts be the exact same angle. I mean, where must they do that? I mean, that's just, you know. I'm going to set this aside for a second. I got the, the positive battery cable on. I'm going to put the negative on, but I need to epoxy the, um, the uh, battery terminal that I made. Not permanent on there. It's on the. Um, and I focus again. It's just sitting on the wire for the time being. So I'm gonna mix up some five minute epoxy, and that's gonna have to sit for a little bit. I like to think be nice and strong before I try to attach that. So let's do that a while. Let's set this down. <coughs> let's. Um, let me take this here and get rid of this epoxy here. Toothpick. One way to keep your toothpicks around a little longer is simply sharpen them up, just get rid of all the excess off of there and just Alright. On a tiny bit. Here. 
this mixes up really good. Okay. Let's set this aside. Set it over. Yeah. I want to set it over here. Oh my. Where am I at? Point this way for a second. Where about stuff? Go back in the cave for a minute. I wanted to show that on oh, my little intro video. I'll just set it over here for a minute. Let it, let it dry and harden. That way I don't pop it or my chamois cloth doesn't drag on the floor, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Alrighty, what else can I do while the epoxy's drying? Um, what can I do? What can I do? Well, I what I can do. I'm going to complete the plants here. Just a little bit more. Oh, I got the epoxy. I Fully hardens up and set. I would think that silver. What I'm trying to do is to uh, make it so that stays in place. Like stepping in something you shouldn't. Is. <laughs> you end up having epoxy or everything where you don't want it. So. body totally off the frame here and I'm going to uh, do some touch-up painting <coughs> this shouldn't disturb the, uh, the cable on there for the time being so let's take this let's snap this off here carefully very carefully You can see here, for those who haven't seen this before, if you've ever gone to Model Cars Message Board, I do have a thread on there of um, 
progress that I'm doing on this. I actually started, I think, around the middle of 2012 or somewhere thereabouts. But during last year, <clears throat> there quite a few not-so-nice things going on. Father passed away. He passed away in September. He was pretty sick all year long, you know, through the beginning of the year, so this past hour, this past September. Um, just not much in the model building mood. I built one car the whole entire year. I was a bike that I did, which is, I'll show you that real quick. I'll have to put that aside. If I can reach up here and not drop it. Dodge Viper and Bill Lavell, Lavell kit, back to so it would be the shine a little better. That's the actual Viper Red. That's painted Viper Red. Pretty much out of the box. I no dust going. That should, shouldn't be in a case, but I'm out of cases right now. This new ones. I changed the wheels. I wanted something that was a bit more um, uh, American. <laughs> Didn't care for the stock wheels in it. So I uh, swapped. Uh, I, Took some um, wheels out of the um, wheels out of the Shelby, the re-release Shelby kit that came out maybe 10 years ago that had these American American bags in it, or whatever they call these. And I figured, you know, I had to do some tweaking for it to fit on the tires. And I think it gives it kind of a pretty neat look to it. I can get the hood open without scratching things up here. There's uh, I can put this in the right light. I did detail the engine up with um, some wires, some different hoses, and of course the DW and so forth. And here's the bottom of it. And this is the interior. I wanted more than just a um, and just a, a basic black interior. Uh, Chrysler, if I remember correctly, offered something called a Mamba version. If I'm not mistaken, I believe most of the cars, there might have been a few oddball, oddballs out there, but they mostly came in white with this, with this black and red too. I want a red car with the red accents and so forth. Said, you know what? I'm going to paint that way. Paint this way. If I'm paying $80,000 for a car, I think I'll be able to get it any way I want, frankly. Okay. I'm disappointed with the back of the car. I. I think we all could have detailed the tail like just a little bit better. They could have um, made it so that they're not, it's not just some depth, some, some detail to the tail lights. But on the one-to-one -one car, I always thought that the back end had kind of a, kind of a seabaring, kind of an economy car look to it. It doesn't look as aggressive as the front. The newest ones do, but I'm, I'm, the jury's still out with me as far as the styling of that new one. I, I, I like the, this style better. It looks better, I think. You know, but that's just me. You know, styling subjective. So, yeah. Yeah. Get her back, back on the shelf here. On top here. Alrighty. If you'll excuse me, I will be right back.
Kennedy. Okay. Oxy's still drying on our uh, our cable here, and I can tell by the little dab I made on the little my little pallet that they're still tacky I and mean, they're still not quite dry. I think what I'm going to end up doing is just letting that um, just let that pretty much sit overnight. Uh, come tomorrow, I'll uh, come back and, and tackle that. I'll put that on all together and hook it on the that's the uh, negative cable. You can't tell here, and I can't get close enough to see it, but um, there's a little tiny hole that I drilled on the very front of the block here, right, right at the bottom of the valve cover, and that this um, negative cable will attach onto that. Most Chevys, or actually most live GMs that I've seen out of, out of that period of time, usually had the negative cable attached to the uh, to the block somewhere. Um, I had I used to own a, a 69 AMX a long some years ago. I had it from the late 80s to the early 99, 293, I think, when I sold it. But if that was done the same way, it was um, negative was on the uh, on the uh, uh, the block somewhere. That car, like Ford, had a solenoid. I remember. I remember. I was able to start that car. I actually had to be in just good, get yourself a good screwdriver, make sure you got a nice heavy handle, or wear some gloves. And kind of touched the positive one to the one post there, and that sucker would start to fire up when you hit the key in your own position. It would start up, you know, while you didn't have to be actively in a car. It can be kind of a dangerous thing, though, if you got the car in gear and it's in first gear and watch it out, you run over by your own car. Wouldn't that be embarrassing? All right. Let's get our chamois cloth. I have this chamois cloth down here because I don't want to see a chassis either get all scratched up here. It's just and by the way, this is something I use. Uh, this is good stuff to uh, polish bodies out with. I don't like using cotton cloth and things like that because I, that's me. I make scratches. Pick yourself up some chamois cloth at the uh, auto parts store somewhere. You get a nice rag. Uh, you can cut up into sections like 20 bucks for a less, um, less a long time. A real long time. I've had this same chamois cloth I've used for years. You can wash it out. You rub it back and forth across the table. You know, back and forth, back and forth. You soften it up again. Make Makes a difference here. I'm going to do some touch up around the front here. This has got some, um, some scrape marks and so forth in the handle body. So I'm going to get the black paint out. I've got some flat, uh, not flat, but some gloss black. <coughs> and uh, let's go ahead and touch those area up for a bit. Let's open this up here. Believe it or not, I've had the same job paint for years. It's old pro muddler. Um, turn around here. Once again, it's, it's backwards according to the way Google's camera is, is or YouTube camera is facing here. Let me poke around the settings, see if I can get that fixed. But uh, yeah, maybe not. I'm not sure. It's weird how they do that. Mix it up here a little bit. All right. Okay. Water base, so I've got a jar of water back here. I can go ahead and okay, take one of my pink brushes here. Let's uh, see if we can touch this up a bit. Mm -hmm. Pink brush, that's a good one. Covered up by the body, but I'm just going to make it look more complete with paint today. So. Do such small details. Well, I'm fortunate that I, I think I have steady hands. 
that's something that either you have steady hands or you don't. You can't train that into somebody or you, you can't teach someone that. Either you have a steady hand, have steady nerves, or you don't. Um, unfortunately, I've always <coughs> had steady hands or have shaky hands at least at this point in time. And the rolling, I will always have steady hands, but you know, with age comes with different problems I develop, so who knows. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate I'm able to hold things. I have a tip that if you have shaky hands, Sometimes you can anchor your hand against the other. That may help as far as setting yourself with some things, but it, it, nevertheless, I, I can't guarantee that because you can still have shaking hands. You can have two shaky hands as well. But, yeah, that's just that and just a little bit of patience with yourself. I always recommend those who are new, don't try to um, do too much at once. Um, the first build should be very simple. Get the basics down first. Try to get as many the basics down. Try to get rid of as many mold lines you can. Thick marks. Um, you're not going to catch everything. Prep the body as well as you can because I see way too many paint jobs out there that I can tell that they just, you know, they just spray the paint on the body, didn't bother to get rid of anything, didn't block sand, didn't do any of that. A new person would know that. It's just that uh, a little bit of, of forethought and care can go a long way as far as uh, the end result. And that's, that's pretty much all that can be said about that. Okay, that's why the chassis is going to touch up. This I have here is, uh, and unfortunately, they stopped making polyester engine black. I hope, like crazy, that somebody picks it up. I've got two whole bottles left, but, you know, eventually it's going to run out. And um, I'm just hoping that somebody else picks up one of your testers or one of the other companies out there. This is the best stuff in the world. If you want a really nice black vinyl interior or a vinyl roof for that matter, you can't beat this. This is really good. It, 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 it's not super duper shiny. Matter of fact, I think it's even better than Tamiya. Tamiya seems to be a benchmark when it comes to uh, acrylic uh, water-based paint. But I think this has to be by a long shot. There was a local hobby shop around here that was carrying, or it was at least last time I was there, a bunch of bottles. I bought two, two new ones. I should go back and see if I can get more because last I heard, this was going to be discontinued, which is really a, you know, a crying shame, but that's, that's the way of the world. Things come and go. It's like people come and go. Okay, I'm just finding what else I can do here while I'm waiting. Um, well, excuse me, I want to put the cord out here away as well. Get back in this cave in my, my bedroom here, so say good night. <laughs> I'll be right back.
Okay, at the moment, I can't think of anything else that I can do on the body because that was pretty much... Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm almost forgetting. I got a coil to put on it. It's an empty slot. I got I to put a this ignition coil that belongs... Belongs in this slot here. And a blue windshield washer thing goes there. So let's see if I can get those, get those out and just get them off the screws and paint them up and then dry. I don't think I'll enough update on that one because they're going to be painted with the same paint I just did this here. So, and it may be, I may want to let those just sit in the dehydrator overnight so it'll be nice and hardened up when it comes time to, um, oops, find the box where it says. By the way, the kit that I'm working with, if I can, y'all can see that. Way a little better. It's a 59 Chevy Impala. So 1993, I think this came out. So it's been reissued a couple of three times. Pretty much after I get the um, engine bay done, I'm not going to move on to the interior. And then after the interior is done, I want to see how everything fits together. And then, finally, 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 I'm ready for painting. And that's the whole, that's like a kit in itself to make sure that comes out right, polishing and all that good stuff. Bare metal foil, the whole bit. Then the whole final, I don't know, I can make one, but I think i Matter of fact, I think I'll make windows for this, front rear glass for this, after I, or maybe during the time I'm building the interior up. Well, I got a problem here. I cannot find the coil. It's supposed to, I don't remember if it's attached or not. It's stuck on this screw right here. Ah, there it is. A little tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. time we have you know, it's 7 30 
want me to wrap this up. I'm gonna got to be up at 2 in the morning so I'm going to be in bed the next half hour or before. So I have to have 20 minutes up. Things are coming real fast. I'm going to call today. I have to call today. So hopefully tomorrow evening. I got, I got some work to do in my car tomorrow after work. So I can't guarantee I'll be back here again. Tomorrow evening, if so, we won't be a long time during the weekday. It's kind of rough. And work all day long, and you're tired, and you got to fix yourself. So you can only me here in the house. And be not just fixing, but I'm not so sure. I want to refer to their care. If they could do that, they are putting their bucks on television and make some money. They can fix food for you. You know, I can't <clears throat> can't leave well enough alone. There's a little hole I'm going to fill, and uh, there's this little tip right there because I do have a wire drilled in my distributor in the engine that uh, on the right end of this, a little boot on it. So let's do it. Let's flatten this out just a little bit. some uh, distributor wire here that I was using and this is not to take business away from anyone but if you're looking for some <clears throat> inexpensive ignition wire go on eBay <clears throat> you want to find something called Kiner K-Y-N-A-R Kiner wire 30 gauge Kiner wire comes in all kinds of nice and lovely colors black, orange, yellow, red you name it to me, this is pretty much a good size for ignition wire. It's probably not exactly scale, but if it were exactly scale, it, it just wouldn't look right because it'd just be too, too dang thin. Okay. This is like, I've been using this for quite a while now. I know Detail Master has all the good stuff, and it may not be nothing more than what this is here. I, I don't know. But for those of us on a budget who can't go out and spend all kinds of money on uh, all kinds of things all the time, good to find something that's uh, like within reach. So I'm going to use my little niche here. I can't remember what drill bit size. I believe it was 75. I'm going to have to use 74. Yeah. Okay. 73. 73 or 74. I'm going to use 73. Okay. I'm just going to tell a little piece up here. Got my wall, Michael Box here. Oh, I'm missing the wheel there. That way. Six thousand five. Six out of eight. Those are lost. All right, guys.
Okay, um, I like to put a little, a little starter point in something that's tiny. And in fact, we use another lens here. Let's see if I can get a little starter hold. I'm using a, a, a little sharp exact of like just be really careful because I don't want to do stuff. And you want to try to get the hole as thin as you can, you know, everyone knows it's perfect. And of course, once you have a microscope, it helps them out. You need to take that bed. They may have a microscope that anybody comes along and says the holes aren't quite thin, and I say, hey, get, don't you know, get lost. <laughs> anyway, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, yeah, I'll try to get a little starter hole in here. I'm going to take the drill bit. That kind of gives you the drill bit. It depends right here, something to start on. And just very steadily. Again, try to keep your drill bits straight. So if you're delicate and they will snap you. You move them around and try to bend them as you're, as you're drilling. This have this this coral have to be in the tip. I think you tell master also makes things and they have machined out or something. Okay. That's pretty much where I'm looking for there. Alright. That's that piece of wire aside. As a matter of fact, so I don't lose it. <coughs> Put a little safe keeping ball too. Let's put that inside here. Now, I do want to thank this, so let's do a mile here to click.
Now, even though I have this mounted on this alligator clip, with that little bit unpainted, once it's painted or once it's dry, I it always think that it's just as long as it's wearing it. I'm trying to get the bulk of the painted. But you see, I have a dehydrated here. I'm going to stick that in there and get that around in the morning or while, by the time I get up in the morning. If I'm able to come back to this tomorrow, I'm ready to put the wire on and go down now. Like that. That's kind of a piece of something. And then I'll just brush it. I've bought the thing brushing already. I need a strand. Aaron. I don't like Aaron's strength because it'll make a mess and stuff and put that off. So by the way, you're looking for good paint brushes. I fully recommend stable brushes or horse hair. Uh, they're okay as far as it goes, but they tend to you know, just lose things after so long. <laughs> I have the uh in my hand I'm looking for my this is here. Now, I am going to turn this around for a minute. I have a dehydrator, which is there. And I'm going to put this little, little coil inside there. Water-based paints are OK, but they don't dry very quickly, or at least they, they dry, but they're not dry. And so I'm going to fire this up. and. dry overnight. Okay, well, oops. I'm the camera here. Glad you guys were able to tune in and um, hopefully we're able to do this again tomorrow. So that's pretty much all now. And you all have a good night. <laughs>